Hey, this is Abram with BSA Bushcraft, and I hope everybody's day is going good. What I wanted to come out in the woods and talk about today is how to identify poison ivy. There's a couple of reasons why I wanted to come out today and show you guys. The first one is it's the big, it's a, um, the late it's late spring and going into summer, and that's when the stuff's everywhere. And it's hiking season, backpacking, going out in the woods, bushcrafting, camping, and all. You can just stay away from this stuff. I'll show you how to identify it because some people are allergic to it and you'll get bad rashes and a whole bunch of stuff that you do not want. It will suck the fun out of your trip. I am not allergic to this stuff, luckily, but that does not mean I want to go fooling around with it because when I get older, that does not mean I'm not going to get it. So if you guys stick around, I'll show you guys how to identify it and where to look. All right, when you're looking for poison ivy, there's a few things I like to look for. And a lot of people mess it up, I think they do, is they're always looking for it to grow on a tree. And most of the time it does grow on a tree, but a lot of the time it does, and it can grow on the ground. It grows in big patches, so watch for on the ground too. So don't just watch for the trees. You're gonna have it on the ground also. So right here, what I have is, it leads back to a vine, and it wraps around a big cherry tree, and these big, branches of the poison ivy comes out and this is all poison ivy right here all these leaves so I'll go ahead and pull one off and show you guys some factors or some a description of the leaves and there's a saying I like to say for poison ivy is leaves of three leave them be so if there's three leaves you want to leave them be another identifying factor for this what I like to do is right here there's gonna be a stalk running down to this leaf it's long but up here right between these two there is not much of a stalk or a stem it they're very closely connected to the main stem so you want to look for that and when this matures a little bit more in the season right in there there's gonna be a dark red tint color there's still a little bit of red in there but it will get very dark some things you want to know about these leaves here is on the bottom of this along the bottom edge see how it's pretty much smooth this is not always the case sometimes it will have indentions but most of the time you'll see the indentions on the side leaves on top you see on both sides of this the bottom's completely smooth and the top's got the indentions but the bottom leaf here it's got indentions on both sides as you see so you want to know about that and another thing is sometimes you will have these white berries on them. That's a good factor of identifying them. Very good. So just remember, leaves of three, leave them be. It's very simple. Okay, what we have right ivy. here is the poison ivy vine. And a rule I like to imply for this is a hairy vine is no friend of mine. This vine right here, I've got gloves on so it's alright to touch, has got hairs coming off of it. All up this vine wrapping around this black cherry tree so if it's got hairs on it it's no friend of yours so you don't want to mess with it so remember the saying hairy vine is no friend of mine how uh, poison ivy works what happens is you will rub up against any part of the plant every part of that plant of poison ivy is poisonous the leaves the stalk the stem the vine every part of it's poisonous the white berries so i would not mess with any of it you rub up against it and some people get contact dermatitis. They will get an allergic reaction to it, which will bring pretty bad symptoms, which I'll tell you in a second. What what kind of, what happens is, when you touch it, it's got, it's called Urashol. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Don't mark my words, but I believe it's pronounced Urashol, something like that. And it will touch you and it will get on your skin and if you have an allergic reaction, it will cause a rash. And this urushal is in poison ivy, poison oak, poison sumac. It's in all three of them. It's very yellow. It's oily and like a resin. So it's very sticky. And it will just, it'll start itching and all that stuff. And you don't want that. The symptoms of this plant is, of the urushal in poison ivy is, you will get a red rash. If you're allergic to it 
you will, it will be red, a very red rash. It'll may have small bumps on it, and it will be very itchy. I'm sure a lot of people have had it before, and it is very itchy. So if you're out in the woods, and say you're not near a house or something, where you can easily get stuff to help it, a couple things you can do, or one thing I know of, it's probably the best thing you can do, is take some jewelweed, do, your, do some research on it, it's a great plant, and you'd want to make a poultice out of the leaves and the stalk. I'll go ahead and get this piece of dandelion right here, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. A poultice is when you would crush something up, whether it's the jewelweed, the flat, or not the flowers, excuse me, the leaves and the stalk, you'd want to take those, crush it up, expose the oils in it, crush it with your hands, called making a poultice, and rub it on the exposed area that got exposed to poison ivy. And um, jewelweed's a counter reactor, it counter reacts the um, urosol, so just be aware of that, it's not going to fix it completely, but if you add it, it's going to help it, help with the itching, stop the itching a little bit. So, jewel weed's a very good option for that. But say if you're close to your house or something. One thing I found that you do not want to do, you won't want to do is um, put warm water on it. Because if you put warm water on your exposed area, what's going to happen is it's going to open those pores up. And when you open those pores up, that urosol is going to sink right into it. It's going to be worse. So what I think, what, the best way, what I know the best way to do is take cold water and put it on a washcloth. If you're at your house or you could use a bandana, whatever you have, and just wipe it down with some kind of soap or something, but cold water, wipe it down, and it should go away pretty quickly. But if you're out in the woods and you have, if you're out in the woods and you have jewelweed, you're pretty set too on that. Jewelweed grows a lot, a lot of places too, so that's a very good plant to um, know. I just, well, I just personally think knowing these poisonous plants really helps. Um, and if you don't, you don't have to know the name and stuff. Just follow the rules of leaves of three, leave them be, and then hairy vines, no friend of mine. Don't touch that stuff. It's pretty simple. You don't have to know the scientific name or that or any of that stuff. You just have to know the properties of the plant so you're staying away from it and you're not going to go out there, touch it, and it's going to ruin a trip because... If you get this stuff and you're out in the woods, it, it will um, it will suck the fun out of your trip for sure. So just stay away from this stuff when you can. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Go check my other videos out. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below or you can email me at bsabushcraft at gmail.com. Either one works. And I always do appreciate you guys watching these videos and just keep an eye out for this stuff. It's this time of the year. It's very in the summer it starts growing everywhere and in the fall these leaves will turn red and amber color so they're very easy to identify then just know the properties of this stuff and you'll be set i appreciate you guys watching this video and i will catch you on the next one thanks guys